Hi everyone, today we are talking about Process Builder. And Process Builder is the kind of second automation tool that we have in Salesforce. It was built after workflow rules, but before Flow. So it sits right in the middle. And Process Builder is probably most notable for its user interface. Um, it's very visual compared to workflow rules. So it was a big step up, but it sits a step below Flow. So it's kind of that in-between tool. Uh, we're going to be talking about it a bit today and the sort of actions and things that you can do with it, as well as some of the things to be aware of. So the thing with Process Builder is that you can do a lot more actions with Process Builder than you can with Workflow. Whereas Workflow just has those four key actions, Process Builder can do things like create records, update records, send emails, post chatter, send custom notifications, you can use it for another action to submit for approvals, you can launch flows, you can call Apex, you can update documents, and you can do cross-object kind of updates for related records. I mean, there's so much that you can do with Process Builder. Um, you do have to be aware though that there is one action that Workflow can do that Process Builder can't, and that's send outbound messages. All right. Um, now the key thing about Process Builder is that you can use it to submit records for approval. Um, it's very visual compared to Workflow and you can control the order of the actions, which is a big win over Workflow. Now there are some considerations when it comes to Process Builder. Some of these considerations are important when you're building in Process Builder and when you're wanting to kind of change or edit or update an existing process. So Process Builder only allows for 50 versions of a process in total, which may seem like quite a bit, um, but it's important that you only have one active at a time. Processes can also be launched from changes on a record, which can be invoked by another process or when a platform event occurs. You have to be a bit careful here because you could actually end up in a bit of a loop where you update a record using a process and that triggers another process which updates a record and then that triggers another process. So you just gotta be aware of what's going on there. Also, as we talked about before, outbound messages are not supported, but you can get around this by using the call apex action um, to kind of achieve the same result. Actions are also executed in the order in which they appear in the process, unlike workflow, where there's an order in the background which they have to follow. You can easily reorder criteria just by dragging and dropping the order that these actions are appearing on the page. And you can also reuse names when creating a new process version. So there's a lot of kind of considerations and cool things about Process Builder. And one of them that I really want to talk about a little bit more is actually scheduled actions. A process can have multiple scheduled actions per criteria node. So what that means is that if you decide to evaluate a certain criteria and then take some action based off that, then you can have multiple scheduled actions in that path. Scheduled actions cannot be used when the evaluate next criteria option is in play. And admins will receive an alert if a user who starts a process then becomes inactive and the scheduled action fails. So scheduled actions are really handy. They allow for a lot of automation that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. But you do need to think about some of those things when it comes to using that evaluate next criteria option. And then also if a process starts and it's got a scheduled action up ahead, but then the person or the user who has started that process becomes inactive. Um, then what happens, you know, you've got to be looking out for those emails as an admin. So that's a bit about the process builder. Uh, I hope that was informative for you. I hope it was a lovely summary. Um, if you have any questions or comments or other things you'd like to see, feel free to pop them in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you back here for some more Salesforce videos.